Hi everybody. So this video is um, to find the area under the standard normal distribution curve in statistics and I'm going to call it the SND curve. Um, so I'm going to label it SND, standard normal distribution. So you should remember about the standard normal distribution curve is that the mean, which is represented by mu, population mean is zero and this is sigma, our standard deviation, and that's equal to one. So this is our population mean, and hopefully you know these symbols, and this is our population standard deviation. I'm just gonna abbreviate that, okay? So if you're on an SND curve, the mean is always zero, and the standard deviation is always equal to one. So therefore, the center of this curve is zero, and all the values along the horizontal are called z-scores. Okay, so all these go hand in hand. If you are referring to z-scores, you're referring to values along the horizontal axis on an SND curve, and automatically you know that the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, and vice versa. If the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, then you're on an SND curve and you're dealing with z-scores. Now, <clears throat> the thing that we want to remember is that the total area under the curve is equal to one. And that, of course, this does continue forever in both directions. But as you can see, the bulk of the area is here, within three standard deviations of the mean. It gets very, very thin, the area under curve, as we go further and further to the right or further and further to the left. Now, <clears throat> there's a trick to find the total area under the curve, and we're going to use our graphing calculator to do that. But what I want you to remember also is that the area is the same thing as probability. Given that the total area is 1, total probability is 1 or 100%, I want you to remember that area is the same thing as probability or percentage. So you can be asked to find area under a curve, or you could be asked to find a probability on a standard normal distribution curve, or in that situation, or you could be asked for percentage. Okay, now... The calculator that I'm going to be using is the TI-83+, plus, which basically has the same buttons and everything as the TI-84, TI-84+, plus. so we all can do the same thing. Okay, so you guys can use your 84, your 84+, plus, your 83, or your 83+, plus. and those are the most common um, calculators for these situations. So, my first example that I'm going to show you is to find the area between two numbers. So <clears throat> find the area of the shaded region, okay? And of course, I'm on an SND curve. The center is zero. Let's call this negative two, and let's call this 3.1. And I want the area of the shaded region here between these two Z scores, given that they're on an SND curve. Now, you could be asked, just for reference, to find the area between these two uh, values or to find the area of the shaded region or, in notation, find the probability that you randomly choose a z-score and it's between negative 2 and 3.1, okay? So both questions are basically the same thing. Find the area of the shaded region, find the probability that you randomly choose one z-score and it's between negative 2 and 3.1, okay? So, we're going to do this on the graphing calculator. And you're going to go to the same thing every time. And you see vars here, and on top of that is D-I-S-T-R, distribution. So to, to basically pull up that yellow, you're going to need to um, press second first, and then vars. So second, vars, to pull up distribution. There we go. This is what should come up when you do second bars. And what you're looking for is number two, normal CDF. Okay, normal CDF is going to give you area on a SND curve. Enter. Now, those of you that have fancier calculators than I do, it might not look this way. What it's going to do is it's going to say area and then mean and standard deviation. So you're basically going to input the same thing that we are. Now, we're going to have to bound the area that we want. Lower bound, 
an upper bound. Um, so my lower bound would of course be the leftmost value, the leftmost z-score, where the shaded region stops. So in this case, I'm going to write it out for you guys, normal CDF, parentheses. I'm going to put the lower bound, negative 2, then comma, which is right above my 7, and then, sorry guys, negative 2, comma, and then my upper bound, higher value, the highest or the rightmost number, the rightmost z-score on this um, shaded region, which in this case is 3.1, 3.1, close parentheses. So on my calculator, I'm telling it to, to basically find the area between these two z-scores, negative 2 and 3.1, on a standard normal distribution curve. Mine is automatically going to do standard normal distribution. Those of you that have the 84, or where it asks you for lower bound, upper bound, and then it's going to ask you for mean and standard deviation, your lower bound is negative 2, your upper bound is 3.1, what is your mean? Your mean is 0 and your standard deviation is 1 given that you're on an SMD curve. Enter. At the end of the day, once you guys um, click paste, it's going to look the same way and enter approximately 0 0.976. We typically round to 3 digits to the right of the decimal place. The squiggly equal sign implies approximately. So I would say that the area of the shaded region is about 0.976, which of course it should be less than 1 because the total area under the curve is 1, and or the percentage or the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's between negative 2 and 3.1 is 0.976 or 97.6%. Okay. So again, any one of those questions, ask for the same thing. Find the area between these two z-scores, 0.976. Find the probability that I randomly choose one z-score, and it's between negative 2 and 3.1, 0.976, or percentage-wise, 97.6%. Okay, now this is, of course, when we have the shaded region bounded by two z-scores, which is not always the case. So let's call that number 1. Number 2. Let's do, on, again, on an SMD curve, the center of this is 0, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. We're dealing with z-scores along the horizontal axis. And let's call this, uh, I don't know, randomly 1.2. And I want the area to the right of that. So how could I write that? Well, I could say find the area of the shaded region, which implies the area to the right of that z-score, or I can say, what is the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's greater than 1.2? Greater than 1.2 to the right of 1.2. So this notation implies the same thing as this figure. So you want to be able to go back and forth between the two. Now, of course, if I'm finding an area under a curve on an S and D curve, I'm going to use normal CDF. And where do I get normal CDF? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator again. Okay, where's normal CDF? It's distribution, right, on top of vars. So second, vars, and it's number two in my calculator, normal CDF. Scroll down, press enter. Again, my older calculator asks for normal CDF and then bounded area. Those of you guys that have a fancier calculator, it might ask for lower bound, upper bound, mean and standard deviation, your lower bound in this case, the leftmost z-score on this shaded region is 1.2, comma. My upper bound, there's no z-score here. There's an arrow implying that it goes to infinity. Now, I can't necessarily put infinity in here, but given that the area becomes so small as I go further and further in my right tail all the way over here, if I just choose a very large positive number, so a thousand, a million, whatever, ten thousand, if I choose a very large number, which is all the way over there in this right tail, it's going to be the same thing as your infinity. Because of the area getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it won't affect the overall probability. So again, if I have a situation like this where the upper bound 
is not directly there like it was in the last example. I use a very, very large positive number. Put one in a bunch of zeros. Close parentheses. Those of you that have to put mean and standard deviation, mean is zero, standard deviation is one. Enter. 0.115. So what, um, let me write this for you. 1.2 comma, let's just call it 100,000 approximately 0 0.115. So the region, this shaded region, this area is 0.115, or the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's greater than 1.2 is 0.115, uh, 115, or in percentage form, 11.5%. Okay, so again, they can ask you the same thing in multiple ways, find the area. Find the probability that z is greater than 1.2. They're the same exact thing, okay? And we could do it in decimal and percentage form. Now, we did an area between two numbers. We did an area to the right of a z-score. Obviously, my next situation would have to be, we'll call this number three, area to the left. So I'm going to just directly ask, find the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's less than negative 2.3. So I don't give you the, the picture this time I ask for the probability and I'm talking about z-scores. So I would draw the picture so I could visualize. It's a z-score. So I'm on an SND curve. The mean is always zero. The standard deviation is one automatically implied because of the z-score. The center is zero. My horizontal axis has z-scores. Negative 2.3 would, of course, be to the left of zero. Oops, let me get that organized. And if z is less than negative 2.3, where would that area be? Why is this doing that? Would it be to the left or to the right of negative 2.3? It would obviously be to the left, because where are my values less than negative 2.3? They're less than that to the left. So this is the shaded region. So this is the picture that corresponds to this question. Find the area of the shaded region, find the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's less than negative 2.3. Once again, if I want an area on an SND curve, what do I do? Normal CDF. Normal CDF, always area under an SND curve. On my calculator, where do I find normal CDF? Above bars, distribution, second, bars. Normal CDF is my number two. Enter. My calculator asks for it like this. Some of you it might ask for a lower bound, an upper bound, a mean, and a standard deviation. What's my lower bound this time? Well, notice that this continues to the left forever, to negative infinity, basically. But I'm not going to put negative infinity into my calculator. So I'm going to use the same concept that I did in the last example. But this time, being that it's in the negative direction, I'm going to use a very large negative number. So let's use negative 100,000. Don't put a comma there. Negative 100,000. The comma comes after that. Lower bound, negative 100,000. Upper bound, what's my upper bound this time? Negative 2.3 negative, oh, comma, negative 2.3, close parentheses. Those of you that have the TI-84+, plus, your lower bound is negative 10 or 100,000. Upper bound is negative 2.3. Your mean is zero. Your standard deviation is one. If we have it represented this way, it automatically goes on to an SND curve. Enter. I get approximately 0 0.011 rounded to three digits to the right of the decimal, right? 0 .1, 0 0.011. So we can say that the area of the shaded region is 0 0.011, or the probability that I randomly choose a z-score and it's less than negative 2.3 is 0 0.011, or in percentage form, 1.1%. Okay, so again, anytime 
you're looking for area under an SND curve, which is the same thing as probability of z-scores. Normal CDF, under distribution, second, bars. Number two, enter. Lower bound, upper bound. If it's a z-score, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. You're on a standard normal distribution curve, right? They all correspond to each other. And as simple as that, okay? If you guys have any questions or need any more information or any more examples, let me know, comment underneath, helpmeprofessorj.com. Go to my website, check it out, at gmail.com, email me, and I can continue and do other examples if necessary. All right, guys, have a good one.